So Dana, thank you very much for inviting me to come to your office. I know we've had loads of chats from previous about working on the Masters in Higher Education, but I'd just like to know what actually brought you to this subject? What, what and why? <laughs> um, I had been working for a, um, for a while teaching fine art in university and um, had um, I, I'd come to teach in university like many academics because of the love of the subject. So for me that was making art um, and then had fallen into teaching um, and it wasn't the initial reason, it wasn't my first love um, and I then decided to go on a course that was being offered at the time, which is, uh, was an educational development or academic development course, which in the UK is understood as teaching and learning. And um, I found it um, really provocative because it made me think about the ways in which I was enacting my, my teaching, uh, which in many ways was contrary to the principles that I thought was so important for building artists in society. So initially I was drawn um, to teaching and learning as a, as a critical space for self-reflection um, and also questioning the traditions that we so easily step into. Um, and then I, as I became more interested, um, I started to research in the area and then got slowly pulled in by um, the department there at the time um, to teach on some of their courses um, and in a way it sounds like they're very different spaces um, teaching artists and then teaching academics which is what I landed up doing um, but I, I really didn't think so at, at the time it was in South Africa um, which was struggling with its many many issues um, post the conflict there and also um, the many legacies of colonialism and oppression. And um, I think both within art practice and within universities, there was an acknowledgement of those systems um, reproducing inequalities. And um, it was, so both um, arts practice and academic practice really seen as places where you could challenge what came before and, um, and productive spaces to really make a change going forward. Um, so I came to higher education through that really secretive route in a sense. Um, and then, so, but, so that was really academic development. Um, and I think uh, for a while it was focused on teaching and learning. And there's still many people within that country and different parts of the world that are focused on teaching and learning. And that's a very, very valid space. Um, but what um, I began to realize was that, um, at least from my experience and what was happening there, was that the exclusive focus on what happens in the microcurriculum of teaching and learning wasn't enough to deal with the many aspects of society that were seeping in to the, to the teaching and learning space. And by ignoring that, um, it was really, really problematic. And so um, I think a lot of it was the context that I was in that made me begin to consider what is the meso curriculum, what is the ways in which the institution is teaching its academics to be, um, how much of that is influenced by national factors or global dynamics, and then also looking at what needs to be challenged in terms of those systems, but also how does higher education serve its communities, um, not just serve economic agendas, and so that's where I really began to shift to what is loosely called higher education studies and, um, and in my own perspective, critical higher education studies, which is an examining of what higher education is in society and really trying to push towards um, making an, an impact in terms of social justice. So why do you think higher education studies is so important at this time? Well, I think there's an acknowledgement across the world that the, the dream of higher education, which is um, to enable agency for people to have um, a sense of uh, self-determination over their lives that help them um, determine which direction they're going to go in addition to remove the shackles that may come from their social location or background and, and that 
that dream of freedom is um, is often not realized. And um, so I think it's really important at this stage to, to question higher education on the one hand. I think on the other hand, higher education is being promised as a solution to so many problems and um, institutions are, are under increasing pressure to do a million things in their societies. The burden is massive. And so it becomes a very interesting space to study. But I think a really important um, area of study too for those of us who are within higher education who are negotiating these things sometimes without even knowing them, knowing what they are. And so sometimes we're a cog in a wheel when actually we could really be making an incredible difference. Um, so I think at this point when higher education is in a crisis in some spaces or given a huge amount of power in another, it's really important for us to be studying it and studying our own practice in a way that empowers us. And what gaps do you feel that there are within higher education studies that you could be addressing? Oh gosh, a million <laughs> gaps. There are a million gaps because in a way, despite higher education institutions being about research and scholarship, um, the traditions of research and scholarship in higher education are very weak. So there are some contexts, and I'm generalizing now, but you know, in the, in the States, the idea of higher education being a force of, of democratizing it, its society has led to a really amazing amount of scholarship in teaching and learning and higher education studies and, and you know, in a range of areas. Um, there's very strong scholarship in Australia around teaching and learning, particularly um, in South Africa, my country, around um, transforming higher education institutions and what that means, transforming knowledge structures. But as a whole, as a subfield, most of the time it's in the interests of the government or in the interests of institutions. And so there are so many gaps. Um, coming from my own perspective, I would say one of the biggest issues is how can higher education in the current um, fiscal constraints and the big neoliberal push towards commodifying higher education and world-class institutions that push for ideas of quality and excellence that's based very much on the Oxbridge models. But the big gap is acknowledging that push, how does higher education still keep that the purpose of serving uh, local communities and trying to redress um, historical imbalances or injustices in society. It's really interesting. So that's, for a lot of people that's listening to this, is there anybody you'd want to connect with? Uh. Well, um, for me it's really, um, I mean I absolutely love teaching in this field. Um, we had an interview with you um, recently and um, you were sort of talking about your openness of engaging. and. Um, what I've realized through um, teaching participants who come from natural sciences and our academics through to those who are looking at resident systems, through to those who are looking at gender inequalities in the States and the UK, there is, there is an amazing wealth of, of spaces and resources and, and issues to, to study and to address and try to improve. So in a way, I'm, I'm open to so much, right? Which is why I'm doing the course. Okay, and why I'm facilitating the course. But in terms of, of research, um, really for me a particular interest and concern is around how um, the issue of, of academic staff and those in authority. How are, are, are um, the research around how the changes of that are happening to address social justice? Because there isn't enough research about that that is considered powerful. So how does one um, hold institutions to account and then also how does one help institutions to change um, the ways in which they characterize their academic staff so that academic staff are not squeezed into one model of what a person should be and that it's still um, respects and acknowledges and gives a lot of space to the knowledge of the communities that people come from. Um, so 
in terms of my research, um, particularly people in the global south, but those who are interested in critical higher education studies, I'm very, very open to collaboration and conversation. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today. That was really interesting. Thank you. Thanks, John.